What's good, YouTube? Today we're gonna do a top 10, and if you're cringing because you see this Nurse Reficule up here, don't worry. We always do three honorable mentions before we enter my top 10. The first is Nurse Burn. It's actually been doing pretty well at regionals in my area, starting off really strong, but I think it has a huge issue with the dice roll. That's why it's not going to make the top 10 and just an honorable mention, but I wanted to really show out that this new added consistency of Nurse being searchable is pretty insane. And people really wanted the face cam back with these. I'm not quite sure why. I like doing my animation kind of thing, but I can kind of understand it. So every other one, I think I'm going to do the face cam. And I also wanted to do a top 10 before it turned into top 10 Zodiac Beast variants instead of an actual top 10. So let's go ahead and get into two more honorable mentions. Uh, the second one, Magis Specters. They have kind of gone ghost uh, or into hiding as 007 might. They've topped a regional here and there, but they haven't been topping any bigger events. And I think the reason is they just kind of got figured out and every other deck's resource game has up to the point that they're going to be able to beat it. And Magic Specters don't even abuse Kieran, their best monster, as well as other decks like Metal Foes can. So Magic Specters definitely taking a backseat all the way to honorable mentions here and my final honorable mention johnny actually topped the regional with Satellar knights and we're seeing it go further uh i believe we had a round five feature match with Satellar, so it was 4-0 at regionals it had to beat some meta decks and i think the deck actually has a really good resource game but again i think it's the problem of going second against things like twin twisters can really really hurt this deck and they're such a slow start uh, so again, I think it's a dice roll kind of dependent deck, but we're not in a dice roll format despite popular belief. Billy actually only won two dice rolls out of like seven matches day two of his YCS. So, uh, when you're playing right, the dice roll doesn't always determine your games. So let's go ahead and get into our top 10. Uh, my 10th deck is Blue Eyes. It's still there. Patrick James, the Blue Eyes duelist, doing very well from the card guys and the ARG circuits. And we still see it here and there in the top cut. I think Blue Eyes is a very, very good strategy. Uh, it still pumps out amazing boards. It's still able to fight back. It gives Metal Foes a lot of problems since uh, they have the normal monster effect and Alkahis can't slurp up normal monsters. Uh, I think it's a very good deck. It's able to draw a lot of its deck and get two cards like Emptiness and Soul Charge faster than other decks, just like our number nine deck, Dark Lords. I feel like Dark Lords is the better version of Blue Eyes. We keep seeing it hit the top cut. It's not quite as good as I gave it credit for, but I also think there's a huge amount of people who just don't have access to this deck. Ixchel's like a $40 card because she's so short printed. Destiny Soldiers is one of the least open sets in a very long time because there just wasn't that much in it for people to get excited about and buy besides the Dark Lords and the Abyss actors, which Jackie Bernal has been using. But I really think that Dark Lords are very good. They're the best cards to try to draw through and get to Soul Charge. And definitely one of the top 10 decks. Two places in the top cut of Anaheim. I'm not sure about Botcham, but uh, definitely, or Bochum, uh, however you pronounce that. And. It's definitely one of the best decks. It's top 10 for sure. It keeps hitting the top cut. Uh, it took first at some foreign regionals like Australia. But I, it's definitely not as high as I put it on my last list. I made a call there. I was wrong. Next, let's go with BA and BA variants like BA PK mainly. It's still seeing the top cut here and there. A tried and true strategy that people have memorized. And we see it evolve. We see like triple mass change number two. Uh, we've seen like variants that use Gofu and Omega. It's still hitting the top cut here and there. But it's for the most part figured out and unable to keep up as much. But it definitely can steal some wins even at the biggest of events. And I think that it's it's just got some problems against the rest of the meta right now, though. Uh, especially against this next deck coming up. Heroes are in the top cut. And I think by placing this at 7th, I'm being really harsh on this deck as I always have been. It's taking so many spots of the top cut, but all the next decks, I think, kind of edge it out in either playability or ability. But Hero's definitely one of the best at setting up their turn one board. Dark Law Toad is no joke, uh, but people have even started maining 
or not maining, side decking Lava Golem in their decks to take care of Toad Dark Law. We, and that's one of the main reasons Raw Sphere Mode is there too. It eats the Bahamut too that would be in this turn one board. But typically you see Lava Golem and you see uh, Kaijus with the ability to have Mithrilium bounce it back. I just think this deck is very, very good at going first and struggles going second like a lot of the previous decks mentioned. Now, uh, Blue Eyes uh, may have a lot more trouble than Dark Lords going second. Uh, Dark Lords able to kind of break boards and then place a Vanities out. But again, if they, the right play is timed in Dark Lords, Heroes, or Blue Eyes, all these decks struggle going second. BA a little less since they can keep going through back row. Next, we have Minerva. She's fallen high off my list. It's just the access. People don't have access. It keeps topping regionals over and over. It's topping YCSs over and over. It's edging closer to the win. It's just, there's two, two factors here. It mills, and uh, it also plays Brilliant Engine, so you can have bad opening hands with Garnet. But, I think it's the uh, best rank four engine next to ABC. It's underrepresented, of course, because the card is $900 plus dollars, and it's definitely very, very good in what it's able to do, but relying on mills throughout an entire tournament, it's eventually going to give up on you, but I do think that it is one of the best decks. And next up, I, I really struggled with putting this in fifth or fourth, the DDD strategy. It's gonna get a huge boost, finally. We've been waiting forever for the structure deck. And I really wanted to edge it up into fourth instead of fifth, but the fourth place deck, I think, does very, very similar to what DDDs actually do in a sense. Because DDDs really like to break boards and make boards. So it's really cool that it has a kind of going first or second potential, but. If an anti-spell is played on DDDs, they're pretty stymed. They they have few options uh, going second when anti-spells flipped up if a board's already made with it. And that's one of the huge drawbacks of the DDDs compared to the next deck. But they get a huge, huge power up with that structure deck. But this deck just does it better. And I left it out of my last top 10 completely because I was thinking... Paleozoic Frogs or Mermail Frogs. I was like, well, which frog deck is better? And I, I said Paleozoics, and it's kind of proved true even better than what I thought. But the Mermail Atlantean deck, wow, it's just proved that it has one of the most insane going first. You can have three toads. You can make a du double Bahamut after using your frog engine to make one toad, and then make two more. And sometimes, like, they'll go, like, Frog, Frog, Mulan, Glacia, turn one. With two cards already gone and two negates, that leaves you with two cards to try to do anything. It's insane to play through. But there are two huge problems with the Marmel Atlantean deck as well, despite it having the best breaking board and first turn board in the deck. One is consistency. Uh, it has the problem that opening all small, mo small monsters gives it huge problems unless you open a prince. And the second problem is that later in tournament, when your opponents know what you're playing, you're able to make a turn one dweller with your instant fusions and rank four decks and just kind of duggy on the Mermel deck's ability to combo off or you're able to just kind of set up against it. Now, uh, if you're not playing rank fours, it's very hard to set up against it, but the dweller aspect with so many ABC decks running around, we saw Philly Luna go from 7-0 to no to not topping Anaheim. We saw Patrick Hoven bubble Anaheim. Uh, Patrick also, I think, came close to topping this uh, ARG 10k, but didn't. When people know what you're playing, they're able to set up against it, but especially so the Mermel Atlantean deck. And third place is ABC. So, it's really rough. Uh, this, this deck keeps proving that it's there. This deck pr keeps proving that it's so good, despite being so simplistic. Like, you just can't play around it, even though you know it's coming. Uh, and there's ways to try, like, the mention barrier. But if you're calling fusion, they Xyz. If you call Xyz, they may find a way to fusion. Uh, but uh, more often than not, if you're stopping Sukiyomi, they're not bringing out Buster turn one. But it's definitely just proved to be kind of the tyrant of the format. It's very, 
Very good. Uh, and as much as people may have think they figured out the matchup, it just proves to be there. And uh, the next deck actually was a huge surprise to everyone on how well it performed. Paleozoaks. I put it, I think, around 5th on my last list, and people were like, too high, it's not going to do anything. Well, it proved throughout that it's been in two finals of YCS, as it keeps topping numerous regionals with even different variants, like William Reyes's Ninja version, where he uses three upstart golden ninja to get to rank four to the uh at standard 45 card variant to 50 card variants like you see so many of this and michael state getting that second place in anaheim joshua schmidt and uh ccg having a very solid build i think like seven of them or something ridiculous were playing it and i think a lot of them topped it's just such a good deck it's got one of the ultimate resource games from graveyard and no matter how much you like side for it you have to draw those side cards or this deck just kind of goes off and while it has a semi-slow start compared to the rest of the meta it's able to live through cards like wabaku and their own trap cards like dynamiscus so it's definitely just earned its spot up here it's definitely one of the best and we see it consistently outperform decks like mermel atlanteans and uh abc while it won that uh one ycs we saw it outperform it in botchum where it had i believe two of the top four spots and it keeps taking more uh it had two of the top four spots i believe at anaheim as well with a deception of michael state so it keeps proving its consistency and ability it's just barely barely missing out on the win and our number one is still Metal Foes slash Metal Foes variant. So I didn't want to like combine, like that's why Yang Zings isn't in this top 10. I'm kind of combining them all here. Metal Foes variants, I think are the best decks. Yang Zings does have consistency issues with the deck, but pure Metal Foes are undoubtedly in my mind, the best deck. Despite anti-spell, you're able to run main deck outs like MST. Uh, certain variants like the Yang Zing Foes will run uh, the speedroid engine in order to be able to make grand pulse and break sword and break out of those situations or jow to to make baxia like there's so many different ways this deck just meshes and melds with the meta and the plays are insane i've been playing with this deck only for three days now and like even as a novice i'm making the most insane boards turn one with like infinity alkahist or infinity cure and alkahist like it's definitely got some of the most sane turn one boards as well as an ability to play back once you side i think it utilizes the side deck better than any deck in the current format you're able to meld in the side deck into the deck perhaps better and that may be its strongest point so what do you guys think of this top 10 this time i didn't leave out the mermail atlanteans uh that was definitely my mistake on uh flawed reasoning of well let's pick one frog deck but uh I think uh, I called a lot of things right, like the Paleozoics last time that people like said I put way too high when it wasn't high enough, ironically. And uh, my honorable mention, uh, Nurse Burn, is more so of a kind of like, hey, this is a thing, more so than I think it deserves a spot outside the top 10. But Magic Specters and Stellar, I think, are definitely knocking and could do something. But Danko Saka being already run for the uh, Paleozoic strategy. Um, I think that kind of hurts uh, Satellar's surprise chance a lot. But let me know if I missed any decks. Let me know what you guys think about this meta as we head into the last month before uh, Junishi Shi slash Zodiac Beast level the playing ground. And do you guys think Metal Foes is indeed the best deck or is it just the ability to uh, meld with your side deck that makes it like up there? Thanks for watching, guys.